Look, I know that it looks like Texas isn't doing a fucking thing to protect its citizenry from the pandemic. What, with their lieutenant governor hopping on TV to advocate mulching the elderly for the sake of the hospitality sector? But don't let their inaction fool you. They may be reluctant to shut down restaurants, bars, movie theaters, and megachurches, but they were among the first in the nation to use this crisis as an excuse to shut down abortion clinics. That's right, Texas, Ohio, and Mississippi have all made moves to ban abortions as part of the general order to ban elective surgeries. Because, you know, if you put off an abortion, what's the worst that could happen? Now, to be clear, this is horrendous bullshit. As important as it is that we preserve medical equipment and protective gear at this point, cutting off access to abortions isn't an acceptable way to get there any more than cutting off access to stitches. Most of the states that have issued orders to close down non-essential businesses have exempted family planning facilities and abortion clinics. Of course, that's because most of those states are run by Democrats, which it is important to remember when we're later trying to decide which of these parties deserves the label of pro-life. And while the but the coronavirus, though, argument is probably most egregious in Texas, home of Dan, but Granny was going to die anyway and I need some boneless wings, Patrick, it's probably the most unconvincing in Mississippi, where there is precisely one abortion clinic left in the entire goddamn state. When asked about the policy, Mississippi Governor Tate Reeves didn't even bother to pretend, saying, quote, We'll take whatever action we need to protect not only the lives of unborn children, but also the lives of anyone who may contract this particular virus, end quote. And since I promised to find at least one nine coronavirus story for you this week, I want to call your attention to Christian blogger Kristen Clark. She decided to toss out her, let's call them thoughts, on sex drives this week. And here's how she accounts for the differences she perceives between men and women's desire for sex. Quote, Based on other biblical factors about the role of the male, female, and husband, wife, I believe that God intentionally wired the man to have a stronger sex drive in order to encourage him to pursue a wife. Since God designed sex to take place rightly within the context of marriage, a young man's sex drive would compel him to pursue a bride with passion and fervency. End quote. Now, I get that this isn't the most sexist shit I've talked about on this segment, but it's representative of one of the most damaging. This idea that A, you can't fuck until you're married, B, that's the way humans were designed to function, and C, you should therefore pursue a husband or bride immediately upon puberty has inspired so many terrible, abusive, unhappy marriages, which would be bad enough if it wasn't always accompanied by a bullshit taboo against divorce. So here's a quick piece of advice for you, Kristen. When you don't have any knowledge, don't bother having a take. And on that note, I'll hand things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.